Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 So we can see that this is going to be a really exciting morning. Hallelujah. It's going to be a very powerful morning. Um, it's going to be a very powerful morning. So let us rededicate this altar to God. Let us pray this morning that all that God has for us will be accomplished in the name of Jesus. So Father, we just want to thank you again. Thank you, oh God, for life. Thank you, oh God, for appointing us to life. Thank you, Father Lord, for waking us up, oh God. Father Lord, oh God, to come to this meeting place, to come to this altar. Father, as we have come, Lord Kilama, on your invitation, we want to thank you for your presence over this, oh God, broadcast. We want to thank you for your presence, oh God, Father, in the homes of those that have come to pray. We want to thank you that you said men ought always to pray and not ought to think. Father, we begin to take authority over every interference, every, oh God, projection, every demonic programming, oh God, that will seek to interfere with this broadcast. We bind those activities of this of the Prince of the Power of the Air and Leviathan. Lord, oh God, we sit, oh God, in our positions, in the heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion, and we establish kingdom rule over the airspace as we come, oh God, to this meeting point to receive wisdom, to receive, oh God, revelation, Father, to receive strength, oh God. Father, to, oh God, accomplish our purpose today in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you for this day that every day has a glory appointed to it. And we receive by faith the glory that is appointed to this day. Lord, we want to thank you because we know that you already have heard us. We stand on Jeremiah 33, 3 that says, call to me. You said, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. One translation of the Bible says, previously hidden things. We want to thank God for Jesus Christ, for the once and for all debt that he paid for us, that we are a people that can come into the presence of God through the pathway of the blood of Jesus Christ. According to Hebrews 4.16, and we can obtain grace and mercy for the day of trouble. We want to thank God that we are alive in a pandemic. Yet men are saying there is a casting down and we are saying there is a lifting. Father, we want to thank you that we have come to release and to receive generational blessings. We have come on your invitation and on your revelation that this is the season that we must come before you and receive grace and receive mercy to release blessings in our generation. So, Father, we ask for partnership of heaven right now. Father, we want to thank you for alignment of heaven and earth for us. For this is that season, the, the dispensation of the fullness of the times, according to Ephesians chapter 1. And so we want to thank you that we are alive in this dispensation of time. We want to thank you for anointing. We want to thank you for in divine enablement. We want to thank you for the mantle of prayer. We give you praise and we give you worship already in Jesus' mighty name. Glorious morning to you. Thank you, Jesus, for today. You want to be excited already? We are taking prayer to another level. We are being obedient. The Lord summoned us to this prayer altar for 31 days. By revelation, the Lord began to show us that the month of August is a month that we must pray. Kalimo Setekira. And you know, revelation is progressive. And every morning as we come before the Lord, the Lord, the Holy Spirit has been leading us in unique ways, opening um, sight to us, uh, enabling us to uh, uh, pray according to the revelation of God. We have been so privileged you know, to have the partnership of even angels. There have been so many testimonies. I had, I received so many testimonies yesterday. Even I have, I am a testimony. If I were to tell you the testimony that I had yesterday, you will understand that we're not even here to play games, that God has gone ahead of us and there are manifestations. There are many things that I cannot share, you know, because of the space that we're in. But I believe that at some point, God is going to transition us to a closer um, application, to a closer um, 
device where we can pray some prayers and we can share some of the testimonies that have come out of this time of prayer it's only day nine can you tell yourself it's only day nine and god has done incredible things oh my god makura kasakata i have learned one or two things about divine alignment from the prayer we prayed yesterday the prayer we prayed yesterday was very powerful yesterday we established by scripture and by revelation the season and time that we're in that is a time uh, the way in the dispensation of the fullness of time we aligned this altar to the altar that is in heaven we established the heaven and earth agreement by several scriptures and you know you can't even believe the quality the power the impact of the testimonies i was massively blessed in a in a in a i want to say in a divinely structural way it was to the perfection of God so that I may have the faith to keep leading you. Somebody shout breakthrough. Wherever you are, shout breakthrough. Somebody shout breakthrough. You need to begin a call right now. Co command that angel of breakthrough to come to you. Begin to ask breakthrough to come. Kula Basak, you need to shout breakthrough. I want you today to shout breakthrough. I was speaking to one or two and asking. I needed to know. I said, have you found that as we have prayed the word of God, there is um, there is strength coming back to you. There is uh, 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 like you're being ignited, uh, but you're being activated by the word of God. The word of God is restoring us to the place of life. That has been my experience. I, I feel like someone who's come back to life. Hallelujah. We want to engage again that angel in heaven, the angel of Revelation chapter 8, the angel that mixes the prayers of the saints, Mula uh, Kasakata, with incense. We want to engage. I don't know. I'm tempted to establish that um, alignment again. Marikas, we've come to do very, very, very important task important task we are redigging the wells of the fathers what that means is that there is blessing in your family that you are tapping into there is blessing in your family that you are tapping into someone decreed there is blessing in my family and i have come to tap into it in fact tapping is a very very um it's beneath us. Let's not say we're tapping into it. We say we're possessing our possessions. That's better. Okay? Just decree that you're standing on Obadiah 17. Somebody just write that out for us. Obadiah you know, 17, we have come to possess our possessions. We are Mount Zion in the name of Jesus Christ. So I, I, I just wish I could give you, you know, the fullness of this testimony, but just know I became the first partaker of what we were praying yesterday about alignment. Somebody decree alignment, alignment. When we are in alignment with God, we're like in a straight line, okay? Angels are able to ascend with our request and angels are able to come down because those angels serve us we don't serve the angels there is power in being aligned you know with god so someone just help me right now let's just again say thank you jesus let's again thank the father let again thank you know the kind of blessing i had yesterday the blessings i had yesterday was a message from god it showed alignment you know people that were important in my life Hallelujah. My two immediate family members. I, I, I don't even want I don't know how to keep this testimony. It's crazy. You know, we prayed yesterday. I, I think I have to give this testimony. I really have to. Because the Bible tells us that we overcome the evil one by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, not loving it. I love that third level. I love that third level. Good morning, everyone, again. We're here to pray. We're talking about the power of alignment. We always establish foundation upon which we then begin to build. And we're not in a hurry. God began to show me, please, if you have been with us or if you're just joining us, God told me until he says, 
you know, uh, uh, that, you know, we have, he gives us a release. We're going to keep digging. Somebody say, I'm digging. We're redigging. I'm redigging. We're going to be redigging the wells of the father. So what does that mean to us in present truth? It means that the good of our family, as we begin to decree and declare as sons of the living God, as we begin to challenge the idolatrous um, structures and systems, and the iniquitous structures and systems in our family lines that, that may be even centuries old, Kilamasika, centuries old, you know, hundreds of years, decades old, but they were established by covenants, evil covenants that have created structures and, and systems of rebellion. Rebellion is 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 anything that is contrary to the word of god and rebellion produces rebellion yeah. the things of the flesh produce the flesh and the things of the spirit produce the spirit so iniquitous you know structures and systems can only produce iniquity okay so you're born again you're blessed you are supposed to be living life and life more abundantly but in reality you're experiencing more stress than you can cope with in reality you are experiencing crisis and conflict and the lord the word of the lord upon which we have been gathered in this altar is from hebrews chapter one verse uh, chapter four i'm sorry Verse 1, that there remains a promise of rest. The Father says, I have a promise of rest for you. So the Lord is taking his body into the this, a pathway open, like the Red Sea pattern, like the Jordan pattern, that we arrive at a prophetic Canaan. That is that place, that place you hope to be in, in year 2020. August of year 2020, even September of year 2020, not even the month, even all of year 2020, the hope you had, the aspiration you had, everything that you had. And the Lord began to say to me yesterday, do you know that I can give you January to July in the month of August? That is what this prayer is all about. You're going to recover those months. Okay. So God is preparing us that the rest of from September, we're even going into a new year by God's calendar. So we are ready. We are going to recover the entire 2020 in this month. By the 31st of August, you're not going to be the same. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we want to just pray for divine alignment right now. I won't read all of them. Um, um, I won't read all of Romans 8 and I'm taking you to Romans 12. I said I'd give that testimony and I said to you that I love where the Bible says that they did not love their lives to the death. They did not love their lives to the death. So they didn't enter into self-preservation. Sometimes self-preservation can be a problem. So I better give you this testimony. So we prayed a lot about, you know, um, divine alignment and we pray for the hand of God to go right to the source of our ancestry, you know, because only God, he's the all-knowing God, he's the Alpha and Omega, he's the beginning and the end, and he's the end and the beginning. So we pray for the hand of God, the right hand of God is his might. We pray for the hand of God to go right into our ancestry, and we imagined the blessings like a, a, a tap. And we ask the hand of God, you know, uh, our hands, the hand of God with our hands, let our hands, because it's the hand of God that strengthens our hand to be able to go into our ancestry. Hallelujah. Kila Masakata. So we went into right there and opened the tap that had been locked by rebellion in the family line, the bloodline, iniquities, and all of this stuff. And we are in a, a new decade. The first year of a decade is the time when, when you go to a farm, you have to first of all till the ground and you have to prepare the soil before you sow your seed. So this is a soil preparing year. And what we're doing is we are preparing, you know, soil for what we are going to gain for the decade. 
the instruction of the Lord is come in the priesthood of the believer. That is the identity that we're praying. Priesthood of the believer. Priesthood of the believer. God wants you in this decade to understand who you are. That you're not just a king, you are a priest. So that we come back to God. We bring back the ark. We begin again to hunger and thirst after the Lord. Again after his word. That you go back to where you first believed. Hallelujah. Where you first believed. Where you first called his name. And that you understand that whatever is in your family line stops with you. So on Revelation 12, 11, I want to give you a quick testimony. So we opened the tab. Would you believe that in that one, in the one day I received the blessing from my husband, from two sisters, from a niece, and from a, an intercessor? And it was five. What five, six symbolizes and the people that gave it. It was all so prophetic. It was so perfect. I experienced the release. What I was preaching. You know why? Because I boasted in the Lord yesterday. I said to you guys. I came out in my identity. And I told you I'm not one that speaks. And it doesn't come to pass. I, I'm not normally that courageous. But I had the leading of the Lord. To be courageous. To tell you who I am. That I'm not going to pray. And say amen. And God doesn't back me up. Unless he did not ask me to lead the prayer. But because he asked me, somebody is going to receive what I received because I became the first partaker of my boasting. Somebody, you begin to boast in the Lord and you will be remembered. Let me tell you, I was not in a very good place financially. Kilama Sokoto, when I said Amen and God of this broadcast. By night time, I, am te I can't even tell you what I can't. It's not about the amount. It's about the people, the individuals that God sent. So God was saying, look, I have brought everything into alignment. I have broken every and any curse, anything, anyone, any agreement entered with any altar and any sacrifice placed on that altar that your finances will not be free flowing Kurabasakata will not be free flowing every media night spirit listen the day that I teach the media you're gonna come out every media night spirit every media night assignment against your finances because it's broken it's broken so it's not just in the amount it's the people that God chose. It was covenant relationships, a perfection. Five for uh, fivefold. Five, you know what the sim symbolism of number five. So we're not even going to talk about number numbers here. But you have to know what five symbolizes. And today is our ninth day. We have come to birth a new order. Nine is the number for the supernatural, the fruit of the spirit. Nine is the number, you know, for you know, nine is the number for the supernatural, the gifts of the spirit. One Corinthians chapter twelve, rather. And nine is also the number for you know strength okay which is character fruit of the spirit you know nine is in a number for birthing so we have come to birth out our breakthrough today so let me just run quickly what how we we go here we love the word of god and when we start we don't even finish so hallelujah so we establish alignment right now someone just begin to pray for heaven and earth alignment and i want you to just say lord i stand on I stand on 1 John chapter 5 verses 9 and 10 and I decree that heaven and earth aligns over my life, over my family. Remember this time of prayer is for you. It's a personal altar that you are rebuilding. Hallelujah. Your personal altar that has been uh, destroyed by Jezebel. Like Elijah, you are repairing that altar that has been destroyed by Jezebel. Somebody begin to thank God right now. Father, we just thank you. I come into agreement, Father, with everybody under the sound of my voice. And Lord, we want to thank you for divine alignment. We stand on 1 John chapter 5, O oh God. Father, we stand on verses 9 to 10, O oh God. And we want to thank you, O oh God, for divine alignment. We thank you for the three that, O oh God, agree in heaven. And we thank you for the three that agree on earth 
up in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody now begin to thank God. Stand standing on Ephesians chapter chapter one verses nine and ten. Someone begin to stand on Ephesians chapter one verses nine and ten and begin to thank God for divine alignment. Thank God for the dispensation of the fullness of time. Somebody said, God, I want to thank you for the dispensation of the fullness of time when everything is being gathered in you, Kaleba Sokod, both in heaven and on earth. So I want to thank you for divine alignment, that everything about me, everything about my family, everything that is due me is being gathered together. So this is not a day of scattering. It's a day of gathering. The hand of God is gathering what belongs to me, what belongs to you. So some Someone, can we just really thank God for that? Please thank God, thank God, thank God for divine alignment. Hallelujah. Progressively begin to thank God. Kilama Sakata for this new day. Say, God, I stand on Psalm 19 and I want to thank you. I join the host of heaven to declare your glory this morning. Somebody, can you begin to say that? I stand on I, uh, Psalm 19 uh, verse 1. I declare your glory. We are going into deep places. So we have to establish protocol hallelujah someone begin to thank god get really excited thank him thank him thank him thank him somebody thank him heaven is declaring his glory that right now so we have to do as heaven has done so someone begin to thank god for the glory of today declare declare and then begin to thank god say god i stand on psalm 19 verse 2 and i begin to thank you for knowledge that was revealed overnight so you're releasing your faith that truly god appointed the night god gave night some some um some knowledge which we must utter hallelujah is it a surprise that god asked job whether he's commanded the morning can somebody begin to thank god right now thank god just begin to pray for your lips decree that my lips will speak your knowledge oh god my lips will speak your wisdom my lips will not speak folly somebody begin to speak right now because you're going to use your tongue you're going to use your lips that's the the same thing when the Bible says your lips is your mouth, you're going to use your mouth, your tongue, you're going to use your mouth to call for that which is yours. So begin to thank God. Kilama Sakata, that day on today, utter speech, Psalm 19, verse 2 says, and so begin to decree that your, your mouth is going to utter the speech that has been appointed to today. Thank God for the speech of yesterday, but you're not going to broadcast old news because the Bible tells us in Lamentations chapter 3, be, uh, chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 begin to thank God for his compassion thank God for his mercies that are new every morning somebody just said I stand on Lamentations chapter 3 and I thank you for your mercies that are new every morning great is your faithfulness great is your faithfulness is someone thanking God like that okay begin to decree again standing on Lamentations chapter 3 it says to deny justice do a man he says to subvert a man in his cause or to deny justice due a man says who is he that will decree it and it will come to pass when God has not commanded it justice in biblical terms means what is due you it means your due right so Lamentations 3 says to deny that from verse 35 to 37 he said to subvert a man in his cause to deny justice due a man can somebody begin to decree right now? Begin to thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ, for the power of the finished work of the cross. Begin to thank God for that once and for all sacrifice we're moving. Begin to decree. Kilama Sokotoria Haman Derebo. That justice due you cannot be denied you because Jesus paid it once and for all. Kilama Sakata once and for all price. Hence the book of Jude. You are told to contend earnestly for the, for the faith that was once and for all delivered to you can somebody begin to contend say i contend i stand on jew 3 and i contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to me jesus is not going to die again this morning you have come to redeem the world of the father at this point can we just say shout amen hallelujah i want us to just go very 
um, quickly. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is a God of the of generations. God builds generationally. Makura Kasikata. Matthew chapter 1 verse 17 lists out 14 generations from Abraham to David, from David to the Babylon. You know, God, God is built generationally. And God has gathered us to make us understand that we're not down and, down and out. We're not cursed. No kira masakara. We cannot be locked out of blessings. We can no longer tolerate lack. We can no longer tolerate religion. We can no longer tolerate Kilama conflict in the body of Christ. We can no longer Kilama. We are coming out in our sonship. We are going to believe God. Second Chronicles twenty twenty says, "Believe the Lord your God, and you will be established." If so, if somebody wants to be established this morning, I hope you want to be established this morning. hande broko mahanda. But I just see the Lord visiting stomach issues this morning. I I don't know. I hear fibroids very very clearly if there is fibroid growth in your stomach just put your hand in your stomach and begin to receive your healing i shared with you testimony just just one testimony other people have had their testimonies i needed to share mine it was raining pouring down exactly what we prayed yesterday the tap opened and i received physical manifestation of that downpour see what's in our generation is not just the money healing many are sick because of you know impediments in the bloodline now we cannot fix society sick and diseased and blinded by religion hardened by rebellion not even knowing what god is saying being ruled by babylon you know demonstrating babylon being you know broadcasters of babylon the whole earth is waiting we are chatting like the earth we are waiting for the new normal we're also saying post-covid but the earth is waiting for us to come and tell them what the new normal is so the pattern for the prayer that we are praying is from the life of 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 abram now in chapter 21 remember this is about Isaac. This is about two generations right now. So there is his father, Abraham, and there is Isaac. Now, Abraham in chapter 21, you know, made a covenant with Abimelech. I'm going to tell this very quickly because we are birthing something today. So Abraham came into an agreement with Abimelech. Abimelech saw that Abraham was blessed and he came and says, well, we have seen that you are blessed. Somebody said, God, you will give me a blessing that will cause men to be attracted to me. This is not a gender thing. I'm just saying men, man to be attracted to me. So humans will be attracted to me. Can we just begin to pray that? Because God said, before we called, he heard. Before we, we, while we were still speaking, he answered. Isaiah 65, 24. So can we just begin to thank God right now? Kula basikata for blessings through this month of August that will attract those that should be attracted to us in the mighty name of Jesus because the blessing of God chooses your friends the blessing of God separates the blessing of God Kilama changes your speech even the bless, blessing of God can change your address your location everything about your life is changed can somebody begin to pray right now by faith because this is a faith journey remember yesterday we brought down Kilama the force we harvested the blessing of Hebrews e e chapter 11 and verse 6 we have vested that 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 scripture and if you were with us if you've been with us from the beginning i shared also that these are the days kula masikata of fulfillment of scriptures there are scriptures promises of god that are hanging and god is waiting for that courageous man or woman that son of god that will pull down that scripture and see its physical manifestation because you have never seen it before but you can see it by pulling down that word my mentor would always say that in abraham was an Abraham. Aha, Kulabo Setekita. Do you understand that? Is God's wisdom hidden in mystery? In Abraham was always Abraham. Makilabo Sekete Hindai. In Sariah was always Sarah. Mukanakira. In you is that prosperous person. And God is bringing out that prosperous person who has to now begin to function from the place of his rest. Makoria Kabusa Katahandaya. So in Genesis chapter 21, we see that there there was an agreement between Abraham and Abimelech. 
because Abimelech saw physical manifestation. I'm saying manifestation, not just decreeing and declaring. He, they saw visibly that God was the, with this man. And they said, look, we want to make a covenant with you. Please swear, swear to us that you're not going to deal with us harshly. And so Abraham, you know, says, look, I, my, I dug a well. I, I dug a well. My servants dug a well. Let's just put it that way. Okay? We dug a well. I own the well, but your 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 soldiers, your people seized it. Has anything been seized from your generation? Did your forefathers dig a well that was seized? Is there blessing down your bloodline? Kura Basika Tahita Mahandaya that was quarreled over maybe a hundred years ago, fifty years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago. We thank God for the ministry of the Holy spirit because the spirit of God is quickening sight and understanding another testimony I had God began to bring dreams that I had back to me yesterday after we prayed and began to open understanding so I know who I'm targeting today Kilamasu, I know exactly who I'm targeting I know where I'm going when I drop the I, I, I get off this broadcast I know who I'm going after hallelujah I pray that you will know who you're going after in the name of Jesus so that agreement was made, and guess what? Guess what? Genesis 21, verse 30, 31 says, Therefore he called that place Bathsheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. Hold on to that. He called that place Bathsheba. Now, come later, his son Isaac. So somebody decreed pattern, pattern pattern we're here to break cycles of delay of despair of despondency and all of that but the pattern that god is giving us the pattern he's given us is the experience of 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 abraham and isaac isaac is the man in the bible who went back to redeem the wealth of his father and here we are in august year 2020 god is saying look back so that you can go Forward. You gotta look back so that you can go forward, but you cannot go the way you are. You have to understand the, the identity that you must go in. You just can't go as that confused Kilamasukata, not sure of yourself kind of person. You have to understand that you're a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. You have to understand that you are part of my royal priesthood, that the only identity you can you can go back into the ancestry and come out without a migraine is as a priest so at this point just remind yourself i am a priest okay so put on your priestly robe because you're going into ancestral stuff and let me tell you in the new testament if you think this is a joke you know what happened hmm? jesus i know paul i know uh, who are you seven sons of Siva. They were beat up by the demons they went to cast out. So you don't want to be going in your intellect. You don't want to be going in your fancy dress. You want to be wearing your priestly garment. You want to be going in the name of Jesus, the name that is high above every name, the name at which every knee must bow and every tongue confess as Lord. You want to be going on a foundation that has been laid on Jesus Christ. No other foundation. This is why I'm giving you the word or every sentence literally. I'm giving you the word because we're dealing with ancient things. And let me tell you, I think I want to just tell you this because we're never you know god showed up in the old testament he came in a manifest and he revealed himself to these people but you and i new creation every the totality of god that is in christ is ours so really i don't understand how we can be talking with demons we ought not to be talking with demons we ought to be talking with angels sending them here and there and them going ahead and assisting us so that we can do the, our work of making the earth look like heaven. We don't want to be talking to, to, to hell anymore. Somebody decree and declare, I, I no longer have conversations with hell. Okay, that is Isaiah 28, 18 decree that every covenant that my family has, I may even have with death is broken this day in the mighty name of Jesus. And you begin to decree standing on 
Isaiah 28:18 that every treaty with hell is annulled in the name of Jesus. All this was given you at the cross. But it is important that you understand that if you have not been this way before, you got to be that way. You have to. The buck stops with you. Every curse stops with you. Every impediment stops with you. Every blockade stops with you. Every stolen good stops with you. Every pathway through which the enemy has caused havoc in your family line, it stops with you. Somebody says, it stops with me. And I want you to decree not on my watch. So here's what Bathsheba is where they made that agreement. And guess what happens? Guess what happened in verse 33 of Genesis 21? I'm taking you back to the Father. Remember I said God builds generational and we're praying one generation to the other we praise him but we have not seen that pattern in our family line Moko Sokot, and some of us are even only second generation believers some of us are first generation believers you know why I love America America is filled with fourth generation believers five generation believers so they are enjoying prosperity and so they can come and preach you this stuff they haven't been in Africa they don't know Kilama Sikata for instance Africa I mean Africa Lubra Kasekete hence God is saying it's time to release the sound of Africa and that sound of Africa was never for Beyonce to release but you see the sons of God went to sleep and so the vortex of evil has been released so you got to manifest this month of August really it is, it is kingdom versus kingdom throne versus throne altar versus altar Kila Masakata. so we're bringing the altar of of the cross to, to destroy every altar that has been speaking in our family lines. And if you're thinking, what is an altar, Obi? Altar is an access place. It's, 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 it's a, an opening. It's a place of contracting. It's a place of communion with deities. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a place of agreement. It's a place, Hura Mashakata, of shifting even. It's a place of transference of power. And those who understand what it stands for that is where they establish foundation to just keep doing evil even when you are in paris like i said sipping your cappuccino someone is somewhere in afghanistan or someone is somewhere in, in soweto someone is somewhere in, in even honolulu you know who understands how to work foundations evil foundations that one foundation gives entry to the other and gives a platform to the other to be able to to carry the spells that then begin to create atmospheres of trouble but this is a day of adjustment can somebody just begin to thank god for that so genesis chapter 21 verse 33 i love this it says then abram planted a tamarisk tree in Bathsheba. He planted a tree in Bathsheba. Today we are going to establish a new order in our family life and we're planting a tree. Kila Masakada, we're planting the tree. Do you know what the tree is? We're planting a tree of hope and light. That is what we carry in that family. As light and salt, we are planting a trees of hope and light in our family that darkness will no longer pass through our family then abram planted a tamarisk tree in the Bathsheba, and they are called on the name of the lord the everlasting god do you know who he is the everlasting god jehovah olam can somebody just type it out there jehovah olam jehovah olam you've known jehovah jerry yeah you have known jehovah shalom yeah you have known jehovah sekenu yeah you want to know jehovah olam the month of august because because Jehovah Olam is the eternal one. He's the everlasting one. He's the timeless one. He's the one that leads you into ancestral lines, his hand, so that you're not hurt. There's no backlash. So let your mind be filled with faith. You will not have backlash. All you will have is the enemy giving you back what he has stolen from you. And how is he going to do that? God is going to use humans. So that is why you have to understand that the person to your left, to your light, right, is valuable to you. God works through humans. Remember what I said, Jehovah Olam, the everlasting one that revealed himself to Abraham. That is who is revealing himself to us. That's who is taking us into our ancestors 
ancestral line, bloodline, that the impediments are cleared before we come into Rosh Hashanah. We come into a new year by his calendar. Somebody shout, Amen, glory, hallelujah. So we come into Genesis chapter 26, and we're about to pray like 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 we never prayed so there was famine in the land so this is a next generation can somebody say generation two so this is a generation two so this is isaac right now i haven't got time to tell you too much about this but isaac had identical pattern as his father abraham so he goes into again there's another abimelech so there's another light told so he's there's another famine and he's in this land and he's being asked to leave because he was was too blessed he was going to put them into trouble because of the lie that he told somebody say i'm so blessed makuraka that people are going to get into trouble because of me mabroko sekete mahanda in your restored and redeemed identity as a priest people are going to get into trouble kiskarabashukata if a king can point at a, a young prophet in the old testament and his hand shrivel listen no evil shall come near you in the name of jesus christ devastation is over somebody decree devastation is over in my family devastation is over if there's cancer ravaging people in your family decree it like now that, that that plague is over it's a scourge it's a scourge of hell stand on isaiah 28 and decree that that pattern is broken the buck lies with me when you stand everything behind you is your ancestral line and the glory of god remember the bible says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you the glory of god upon you the the familiar spirits cannot see through to attack anybody else. The book talks with me. So we come to Genesis chapter 26. So Isaac, having been blessed, the Bible says he was so blessed that he sold. And in that one year, he ripped a hundredfold. Do you know that the day we prayed this, I think it was day six. I can't even tell you what happened in day six. I was blessed a thousandfold. I was blessed a thousandfold. So I'm like, I'm just like, um, like like a free flow whatever i'm getting and i'm i'm throwing out i'm getting i'm throwing out yeah i'm i'm just blessing i'm just like a traffic warden of blessing hallelujah may that be your portion in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah so isaac now after being so blessed genesis 26 verse um 18 says and isaac dog again Somebody say again, <laughs> Kuraba. I have a message. You can access it on YouTube. It says the power of again. You have to know how to navigate a full circle season. It's called the power of again. You have to know how to navigate a full circle season. And I was amazed. I was preaching that message in England. And a week later, I heard, you know, a, a similar message by one of my most favorite teachers ever, Doshits. You can access that wherever his uh, stuff is there. It's the power of testimony and remembrance. You really need to know how to navigate a full circle season. Remember I said it's a dispensation of the fullness of times, Ephesians 1 tells us. So it says, Isaac dug again the wells of, 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 of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham. Somebody shout Genesis chapter 21. Can you get the matrix? Okay. He says he dug the wells of his father, which had the father had dug before. Remember the Lord said to us, what we're doing in these days, we're digging, we're redigging. He dug again. So redigging. He dug again. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. You see, a generation, after the death of one generation, war began war began and things became difficult blessing was no longer flowing instead sickness and crisis and stress and hassle and the lord has come to you and i by his spirit prophetically and say no that's not what i called you to i have not given you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind god says no 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 i did not give you that cancer i did not give you that stress i did not give you that covid 19 i did not give you all of that no kila basakata even to apostate israel i said i know the plans i have toward you good not of evil to give you a future and hope Gen jeremiah 29 11 so how much more you and i kill us we have a, a greater promise greater hope but we need to take our position to be able to activate so he dug the first world and he called it essek because they quarreled with him second world sitna they quarreled with him third world he's 
that was good. He says, okay, room has been made for me in the land. We found water. But my mentor, one of my mentors, Sumitro, brought a revelation that that's not where to be. You don't just settle that. It's Rehoboth can be a place of settling. Because then, when you're in Rehoboth, everything is good. It's wonderful. But there was a well, remember, the well where that Isaac, um, that Abraham dog, and that well brought a lot of quarrel. Uh, it brought a lot of contention. Uh, Abimelech's people, you know, tried to seize that well. They saw what was in it. What did the devil see in your generation? What did he see in your star? What did he see the glory that you're carrying? What did he see in your family? The scientists, the invaders, the creatives. He saw the prosperous people. He saw that God seeded in your family. Wealthy men, wealthy women, healthy women, innovators, creatives. And he went and raised a, a, an iniquitous, uh, 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 iniquitous structure rather than re following in the patterns of those who loved him. A uh, rebellion came in and God says, I will visit. He already said that Exodus 25, that he will visit the sins of the fathers to the fourth generation of those who hate him, but you love him and you're part of that family. And you may not be, you know, even fourth generation believers, second generation. So you've got to stop it that right there. You have to come in your priestly identity and say the book stops with me. So three wells, Essek, they quarreled with him. He moved. Do you have that kind of stress? You do this. People are after you. They're copying you. They're cloning you. They just want, don't even want. They're depleting your glory. We're going to be dealing with that one day, okay? One of these days, I believe the Spirit of God will lead us there, okay? So, he now dug. He moved to the fourth world. Come, somebody shout fourth dimension. We're coming into the fourth dimension tomorrow. Today, just begin to in the one minute you have right now. You know, I said you're going to pray like you never prayed before. You see, when you have understanding, you don't spend many hours in prayer. Mula kabasa kata. You pass laws that nullify every other law by which your family has been contended over. What is the pattern? Where are the negative patterns? May the Lord open your eyes to see those negative patterns that have created cycles of delay, of postponement, of hope deferred, of despair, of stolen glory in your family. The Lord says that there is a rest. My rest, the promise you have is of, of God's rest, not your rest, God's rest. And that's where he's leading us. But he says, look, in your identity as a priest, you got to go back. So come on, somebody just begin to decree. So Isaac moved to Bathsheba and Bathsheba, he located that well that his father dug. That's what we're digging right now. Father, I just want to thank you for your son, your daughter. I want to thank you for the good that is in that family and those that carry the glory in that family. Lord, the book lies with us. So we begin to pull out life from our family. Every blessing, everything that you gave to our family that has been locked up. Father, let the phones begin to ring. Let the WhatsApp messages begin to come. Father, let the emails begin to come. Let announcing angels visit our families in the name of Jesus. What has been locked, whether it be intentions, whether it be benefits, whether it be stolen land, whether it be it be our appearance worlds that others have hidden away, even nations, whether the wealth of nations have been hidden away. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we say amen to all that we are going to receive today. And by the time we're back tomorrow morning, let there be testimonies in Jesus' name. Listen, please send me those testimonies. Keep them coming. Hallelujah. I cover you in the blood of Jesus Christ and I love you with the Lord of the Lord. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Keep commanding the morning. As you go into work, change the atmosphere of your work. Remember, Today, we have birthed a new order in our family line. David said, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit that I can teach transgressors your ways. Hallelujah. So you are someone that has to be able to teach transgressors his ways. Hallelujah. I kind of I thought, you know, we got to go, but I remember we gained some minutes because we had technical issues. So can you see progressively? Can you see what? God is opening our eyes to that in Genesis chapter 21, right there in the time of Abraham, 
Abimelech made an ag agreement with Abraham. He saw this man was so prosperous. There is prosperity in your family. And the Lord is saying this and we got to obey it. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. When you're established, nothing can, can shift you out of position. It says, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. I will prosper. You will prosper. That is God's will for us in the name of Jesus Christ. This translates to the fact that God is sending out his sons. According to Romans 8, 19, the earth need not wait so long anymore because you are about to show up. What if what you have in your ancestry is enough to sort out a nation? What if? Do you know what? The hand of God is going right to the source of your ancestry to bring out this stuff. He, Isaac, in was inspired the holy spirit wasn't at work then but don't forget we're dealing with the triune god so isaac the son of promise the heir of promise you know asked for the wealth of his father somebody just begin to ask right now begin to decree proverbs 13 12 says hope deferred makes the heart sick Okay, you have not desired, you have not, you have nothing to lose. By obeying the Lord. Many of you, there were businesses you started, it failed. There were things you started, everything you start, someone's going to quarrel, there's going to be issue, there will be no money, there will be no this. It's just really stress. And we never gave our lives to stress. And God says, I didn't give you stress. I never gave you stress. Go and look at the book of Timothy. I never. God had not given us the spirit of fear. He didn't give you stress. He didn't give you fear. He didn't give you pandemon, pandemonium. He didn't give you that. He didn't give you aggro. God gave us love. God gave us power, dynamis, and sound mind. So with soundness of mind, God says, look, what I'm dealing with right now is generational blessing. You have known so much about generational curses. I want you to understand that you are a, a, a source of blessing. Now you know about Noah. Is somebody praying? Just keep praying. I'm just sitting in the scripture because like I said, we are dealing with bloodline issues. We're dealing with ancient things. We're dealing with four generations. And Jehovah Olam, the eternal one, the everlasting one that appeared to Abraham in Bathsheba is who is leading us. His hand is taking us into our bloodline. Otherwise, we may just, you know, some people may just go out and all kinds of crises and stuff begin to happen because you're not even believing in the power of the finished work of the cross. Okay, you are being in a place where you have regarded hell so much more and you have not regarded heaven. So what God is saying to us right now, I'm giving you the priestly garment. I've given you a throne to sit on. You go in the authority and power of the kingdom and establish a new root of blessing. Can you imagine another pattern? Why you must do this? Noah was of the ancestry of Enoch. The man that was so righteous, he what we got and was not translated to heaven. God could have could have transferred Enoch's blessing to Noah, but God found Noah faithful to begin a new route of blessing. Kulaba, he entered that ark with everything, the wisdom of God hidden in mystery that he would come out and become a man that God can use to start again. So everything was in twos, the number for covenant, everything. God prepared him that as soon as he got out of that act, there's going to be a covenant. Can somebody begin to decree right now? I'm a beneficiary of the new covenant that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. You can even look back in your prayer. You can be that dramatic to get what you want. You say, God, I pray for my bloodline. I pray for my ancestry. Begin to pray again for the source of your family. There was a man many years ago, I was in England, he called me from Africa and he began to speak to me that nobody in his family ever got married before age 40. And as he was speaking to me, Kalibo Sokoto, I saw a tree and I saw a tree in a particular place that wasn't where he was saying he came He came from. I was watching what he was, he was speaking the words, but I was watching the words like a, a movie. And I said, look, I see a tree in another place that is not where you come from. And the guy said, no, no such tree, you know, this is our family home. I said, well, I'm sorry. 
sorry, I'm in, I'm in England. I don't even know about this tree, but this is a tree that God says is connected to your entire tribe. You know, the Igbo tribe of Nigeria. This is a tree that your tribe worships. And this tree is in a place which is the original place your family, you know, came from. And he, I said, okay, like, I said, okay, you take seven days, go find elders in your family, do a research and call me in seven days. And when he dropped the phone, I was like, oh my God, I was shaking. I was like, God, I hope this is right. You know, but I knew I saw this as a picture. I said, see, yeah, a picture. I saw it very clearly. So he calls me after seven days and there was just, he was like, you, you can't believe this. My uncle confirmed it. That tree exists and my uncle still offers sacrifices. So are you surprised that everybody, everybody in his family, he was just about maybe 30 something 38 you know and every other person nobody ever married before age 40 and many were unmarried so we began that you know prayer and that curse was broken and destroyed but guess what he veered off and, and married you know someone that god did not ask him but you know some one of these prophets you know suggested let me tell you no prophet is supposed to tell you who you're going to marry prophets don't introduce destiny to you the work of a prophet is stated very clearly in ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to equip you for the work of the ministry a true prophet fivefold prophet is to teach you to hear god and to confirm and to establish you in proper prophetic protocol and not to tell you who you're going to marry they are not supposed to introduce Introduce destiny to you they're supposed to confirm nothing that God says to you is to is should be strange to you the Spirit of God in you causes you to receive confirmation so come on somebody begin to pray right now because you're doing work in your ancestry if you devalued yourself esteem yourself right now to esteem is to glory come on come on somebody where you have devalued yourself where you have allowed people introduce destiny and bring you blueprint that God hasn't written about your life where you have allowed people who carry the gift of prophecy like you to make themselves prophet over your life i want you to begin to repent that's part of the rebellion you know that's part of the rebellion that's given the enemy access to create omen of havoc over your life so you have to repent there where you have been in that idolatrous uh, relationship where you have giving your life to somebody else to manage. I think we're just going to be rounding up right now. Kurabo Sekete. So remember Isaac Redog. He went to back to the well and th there was something Isaac did which you have to do as we pray. Isaac went to the wells that belonged to his father. He did not go outside of boundary. Yesterday we prayed about boundaries. He didn't go outside of boundaries. He didn't go outside of the boundary of the family. Isaac stayed within boundary of what was his family, families. And the Bible says also there's another thing that Isaac did. He called them by the names which his father had called them. He called them by the names. Somebody you need to be praying right now because some of you don't know anything about your ancestry. But you know what? Jesus is Lord. The hand of God is assisting us in this prayer that we are praying. So somebody, I want you to begin to ask for the ministry of the of the sevenfold spirit of god can somebody begin to ask kilamo sekete ribroko sekete somebody begin to ask malibo sokotori abasakata Label, we're closing right now. We're closing right now. You're birthing the future of your family. Remember, God could have killed Mosekete. He could have put Enoch's uh, righteousness on Noah, but he found Noah worthy to begin afresh. The, you, God is beginning afresh with you. God is beginning afresh with you. God is placing so much blessing on you that everybody around you is going to be blessed. God is healing your finances. He's healing water. He's being released to you. Your finances in particular. You're not coming into this decade bo broke down and out. Malibo Sokotoria Kasakata. God is visiting. His hand is visiting finances. His hand is visiting health. God is bringing healing to the people and God is breaking stronghold of idolatry that has put us in that place. So begin to ask uh, for the spirit of wisdom and understanding somebody to close. Come on, Kilabo Sekete. Broken. Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain. Lucas Aka, he put his head between his knees. We've only prayed, uh, 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 um, redigging the wells three days. We have another four to go. Seven times he went. Somebody begin to ask for spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and mind, knowledge.
knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, the sevenfold spirit of God. Father, I just want to thank you for this time of prayer. I want to thank you for your people. I want to thank you. There are at least three, I mean, God calls them ingenious, ingenious ideas that have been released to three people. You're going to come like project projects and you're going to be like a project manager and let me tell you the currency in those three ingenious ideas is going to take you through the decade you're never going to be broke if you manage what god is bringing to you i can see you very very clearly there are three people who god is depositing their minds because they are ready they're ready to be used they've looked back and they can look forward hallelujah so father i want to thank you not just for these three and many more of us, O oh God. Father, may those testimonies keep coming. Thank you for this time of prayer. I bless your holy name, O oh God. Lord, I thank you for everyone that has come out today. Thank you for their time. May time be multiplied for them. Lord, may, O oh God, Father, as they go to their various churches today, as they worship you today, Father, may the fire that has fallen on the altar of our own hearts, Father, light up our churches, O oh God, that everyone, O oh God, that comes across us, Father, we see that we have been revived. Lord, let the spirit of revival, O oh God, that is blowing across the earth, my Lord and my God, quicken us, O oh God, onto the high hill that you are calling us, O oh God, Father, of belief, of faith, of manifestation, of demonstration, Ah, because you are God. Thank you very much, everyone. See you here uh, tomorrow morning. Thank you for your patience. We started with a little bit of, mm, 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 but we took over by the grace of God and we return all the glory to God. There's not one day that we have said amen that I have not received testimonies from people. Let your testimony come believe. This is not an, a, a, a usual time of prayer. We are transacting an apostolic stratospheres. I mean, when we're done, it takes me like four hours to come down the earth realm because we are transacting from a very high place. And I want you to know that that's where God's called you. You are called to move in those stratospheres. God bless you. Have a powerful Sunday. Uh, find someone to bless. Please share um, um, this uh, video. Share it with others. Let us fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. Remember the Lord says there are many promises in the Bible that are unfulfilled. Find something today. Not just, you know, warfare scriptures. Find something that blesses your generations. Not just today's blessing. Don't ask for the daily bread blessing. Don't ask Ask for today's message. Ask for long term. The whole decade was going to bless you. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow morning.